this video. I will be eating every single bun meat I can find in the city of Saigon, Vietnam. But first, let's back up. Internationally, the two most well-known street foods to come out of Vietnam would be pho and the banh mi. Pho, you've heard of before, a delicious beef noodle. But today, we're focused on the banh mi. The word banh mi literally just means bread. But over time, especially internationally, it's come to be known as bread with lots of delicious stuff inside. Today, I'm going to be walking you through some banh mi classics that you must try if you come to Saigon. But we'll also be trying some very far-out banh mi's. Banh mi's you never knew existed. Let's get started. We have come right here to our first banh mi location. Now, if you have had a banh mi internationally, it's probably this right here. This is called banh mi tit tit. Basically just means meat. What's fun about this type of banh mi stand is that there's so many different toppings you can put inside. Let's go take a look at some of the ingredients they have. Here we have piles and piles of cold cuts. Right here we have a pork pate. This is pork floss. This is ham. This is a pork cold cut. This here is a beef sausage. This one right here is head cheese. And I'm told this one is just called normal sausage. And delicious chalua pork loaf. Chilies if you want to make it spicy. Cucumbers in case you're sadistic and hate yourself. And right here pickled daikons and carrots. Banh mi preparation has begun and it starts with the banh mi bread. A personal size baguette cut in half. First it's going to get a delicious stream of pate, then some mayonnaise. This lady's moving fast. I'm trying to keep up. Then daikon and carrots. She puts on a variety of cold cut meats, even more sausage. Now the coriander, a little bit of spiciness with the chilies on there. Hit it with some soy sauce and that is ready to go. That was about 10 seconds to make that whole thing. I hope you caught it all. We have our first banh mi right here, but first let's talk about price. This comes in at 25,000 Vietnamese dong. Sounds like a lot of money. False. That comes out to about $1.04. Try getting a banh mi in the USA for a dollar. Not gonna happen. You can see pate on top, coriander, the chilies, the meat. It's all stacked up beautifully. Try it out. <laughs> The bread is crunchy, it's soft at the same time. The pate has a very savory but livery heavy flavor to it. I didn't even know that I liked liver pate until I moved to Vietnam. Now, I love it. One thing you have to be careful for is that there are chilies inside. Every other ingredient is spread out evenly across the banh mi, but with the chilies, you just never know when you're gonna get a chili bite and it could destroy you. So oftentimes, as a foreigner, when you go to order a banh mi, they will say, gai? And that means spicy. And they're asking, can you handle this? Because uh, I don't want any lawsuits. If you're not distracted by the heat, you'll be overwhelmed by the delicious flavors. You've got the meat, you've got the crunchy bread, you have pate to give it some bold flavor. Then you have the pickled carrots and daikon to make it a little bit sour. So all those elements together make an amazing balance in one sandwich. This is our first banh mi, but we have many more to come. Let's keep moving. We've come to location two, right behind me, banh mi way. Mm. This banh mi, you can instantly tell it's different from the other banh mi's because of the shape. It's a great diet banh mi. If you're looking to cut down on calories, that's not actually true. I don't know why I said that. Well, let's back up and learn more about the banh mi way. First of all, this sandwich comes from central Vietnam, and the name literally means bread stick. It retains the characteristic crispy crust and soft inside found in a regular banh mi. Let's see how it's made. It all starts with the banh mi. It's already been pre-cut, and she puts on a little bit of soy sauce. From here, the saute, giving it some heat. She lines it with pork pate, quail eggs that have been cut in half. Here, the cold cuts are going in. Now, a little bit of pork floss, pickled carrots and daikon, coriander, and a stripe of chole mix chili sauce. From here, it must go into the toaster to toast, and we will see you soon. We've got our banh mi right here. It's in a protective paper. I'm gonna remove that right now and reveal the glory of the long, thin banh mi. Take a look inside. You can see just lots of delicious ingredients. The biggest difference here is that it's been toasted, so the outside is a little bit crunchy, even a little bit croutony on the edges. Let's try it out. Mmm. To be honest, our first bite was just bread. My mmm, faking it completely. There's so many benefits to this sleek, slender shape. First of all, very easy to fit inside your mouth. You don't, huh. I gotta stop doing sexual jokes. It's mostly like bread with a little bit of stuff on top. This seems like less food because it's stretched out, but it actually is less food as well. And therefore, the price is reduced. It's only 62 cents per banh mi. If you're just dipping your toes into the banh mi pool for the first time, if you don't want to commit, try one of these. Let's keep moving. 
Welcome to our next location. This place is serving banh mi heoe. But what is heoe? Well, it roughly translates into a roasted pork banh mi. I would say it's probably the second most popular type of banh mi in Vietnam. The combination of crispy pork skin, tender meat, crunchy pickled vegetables, fresh herbs, and the soft yet crispy baguette creates a harmonious blend of flavors and textures. And that's me saying that and not ChatGPT. My words, scripted by ChatGPT. <laughs> We've just come inside and they have all their ingredients laid out perfectly right here. First of all, a big pile of banh mi bread that gets dropped off every morning. Just like pho noodles in Vietnam have their own factories that send out noodles to many different restaurants. There's also banh mi bakeries in Vietnam that make bread and bring it to several different locations, including here. Oh, they make their own banh mi. I can see, I could tell actually, it has a signature look. It looks bigger than some of the banh mi, like more bulbous. Here's what we really care about. This is the meat, and the meat looks magnificent, glorious. The smells in here, the aroma is amazing. They've cut the meat into different sections, some that are more fatty, some with more skin, fat, and pork together, and some that's just more meat. The banh mi making has begun. She cuts it in half with the knife, grabs a generous portion of pork, and piles it in. From here, onions and coriander, pickled daikon and carrot, some spicy chilies. Oh boy, can't wait for that. And then and right here, this is what we're waiting for. That sauce is what's gonna bring it all together. So we have our banh mi right here. Now you can see it's very different already because of the flavor base, the sauce. We have the pork and the sauce and then many other familiar ingredients. Nothing left to do but to give it a try. Mm -hmm. That's good. My mouth is so full of flavor. You can just see all this pork sticking out. It's a very heavy sandwich, but it's balanced out with the pickled vegetables and the cilantro. This one has a very unique texture. You can feel that crunchy skin. And every time you get a hit of that sauce, you will wish that you asked for more. It's like sweet French onion soup, but mixed with more soy sauce and pork flavors. It's incredible. This is my second favorite type of banh mi in Vietnam. My most favorite, I will not reveal until the end, but it may not even be on our menu today. It's a secret banh mi that not everybody knows about. So this is banh mi hail way. Soon, we'll be checking out banh mi's you've never even heard of before. Let's keep moving. For this next bizarre banh mi, we have gone deep into the Bintan district. This is about a 10 minute walk from any main road. But if you happen to meander down the alleyways and find this lady's stall, you'll discover a banh mi filled with braised mackerel. The next most fun part about it is the fact that the bones are still in the fish. It's not that I haven't tried this banh mi, it's that I never even knew it existed until this moment. It starts with the banh mi bread. She slices it open. Oh my god, a whole mackerel going inside. And then some onion and some tomato too. Pickled veggies, coriander. Definitely need some fish sauce to go with our fish. And that banh mi is complete. Bun mi ca ca. No, not ca. 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 Bun mi ca ca. So in Vietnamese, ca means fish and ha means to braise. The way that this is cooked is simmering away in that crock pot for hours. Whole fish, head to tail, everything is there. Now, the big question is, do you start with a head bite or a butt bite? I know what you're thinking. Sonny, fish don't have butts. Oh, they absolutely do. You haven't been scuba diving where I've been scuba diving. All right, here we go. I taste tomato. The bones are actually thin and crispy. They kind of add to the texture a little bit. Oh, the fish even tastes slightly sour, almost pickled. It has some fishiness to it. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just saying if I had other options, I would probably eat the other option. And it is a banh mi unlike any banh mi I've experienced before. On to the next location. This place is called Banh Mi Minka. Minka is the name of the woman who runs this establishment where she has a load of different types of banh mi. What we're here in particular for today is Banh Mi Shumai. You've probably heard the word shumai before, especially as it relates to Chinese food. The original Chinese version typically refers to a steamed dumpling filled with meat that looks like this. But the Vietnamese shumai is more like a meatball, and the meatballs she's serving here are stuffed with salted egg yolks. It's gonna look nothing like any shumai you've seen before. We're gonna go inside now and take a look. We've come into the kitchen. This is Mika right here. Nice to meet you. This right here is the shumai. Pork on the outside, and you can see that yellow salted egg yolk really popping out from the body of that. Before the shumai is served, it's put in a sauce like this. A sauce very much like where we just came from, except no fish and lots of pork. So that is a special ingredient. Let's see how the sandwich is actually made. Step one, grab the banh mi bread. Slice it in half, we get some lettuce put inside, then some pickled vegetables, and then right here, our meatballs, the shumai. Oh my gosh, two of them are being put in. This thing is stuffed with meat and with egg yolk. That looks awesome. Now, we gotta bathe it in some of that sauce. Hit it with a little bit of coriander. Before this is ready, it's gonna go inside the air fryer. Boom, nothing like sitting down on a questionable chair in Vietnam to eat street food. This is the shumai. Now, you can see the salted egg poking out. It is a lot of meat. Mm. 
That's really good. Come here, you can see I got about half of the salted egg yolk on that bite and a load of pork. And these two really complement each other well because the pork is wet and juicy and succulent. And then the egg yolk is a little bit dry in a good way. It's a little chalky. It's hot from the inside and the outside. So it's kind of steamy. It makes the bread softer. Whereas my first bond meat today, it could cut the roof of your mouth if you're not careful. Like Captain Crunch. Remember Captain Crunch? It was so good, but then it left you scarred for days. This, I would definitely get again. Except for at our next location, because I'm going to be eating something different from this. For our next Banh Mi, we have Journey to District 1. It's more developed, it's modern, it's cool. This place is called Banh Mi Grandma Lu. You see Grandma up there with her levitating Banh Mi. It's floating, the ingredients are all floating, and I expect the exact same when we go inside. Here, they're serving a one-of-a-kind Banh Mi that you can only get here using one very particular special ingredient. That ingredient is unlaid chicken eggs. Huh? What's that? An unlaid chicken egg is an egg that's forming, developing within the chicken's body, but it never comes out, so when they slaughter the chicken, they see it, they grab it, they use it, they cook it, they put it in this banh mi. Let's go inside and take a look. Welcome to the inside of Grandma Lou's. All the fresh ingredients are displayed right here as you walk in. These eggs right here, these are the unlaid eggs. So you can see these little tiny eggs, these were really just at the beginning stage, and then some of these really big ones, I mean, those were almost ready to be pooped out, but no such luck. Aside from the ingredients, one thing that really sets this place apart from any other banh mi shop is that they basically have a whole brick pizza oven where they roast the banh mi. There's a wood fire on the inside, and I can see some banh mi's in there getting happy and crispy. I cannot wait. Let's see how they build this banh mi. Production begins with our banh mi bread. We're gonna hit it with some mayonnaise. That's my favorite ingredient ever. From here, fresh coriander is going inside. Pickled veggies, and then this is our marinated whole chicken. If you're wondering which comes first between the chicken and the egg, in this case, it's definitely the chicken. Now it's time for the unlaid eggs. She cuts off the individual egg balls and cuts them in half. Now that the unlaid eggs have been cut into thin slices, they are put onto the banh mi. From here, some salt and pepper. The sandwich is complete, but it needs to be roasted to perfection inside the brick oven. We have our banh mi right here. Take a look. Pulled chicken mixed with these sliced, unlaid chicken eggs. That being said, is this delicious? Let me try it and find out. Cheers. Mm-hmm. That chicken is delicious. There's a lot of chicken in there. It's very sweet and very savory. I've had unlaid chicken eggs many times in the past. It's one of my favorite bizarre foods, but I've never seen it cut open like this. And when it's cut open, it looks really interesting. It has this rim on the outside. It's a lighter yellow and then really dark kind of orange on the inside. I'm gonna take an egg bite and see if I can actually taste or experience the egg amongst all that chicken. Oh, I'm tasting the mayonnaise in there too, mixed with the sauce, mixed with the egg. The unlike egg is thick, it's creamy, it's delicious, and it really adds so much to the texture when you're eating it. What's really surprising about the sandwich is the price, because you go inside there, it's a nice place, but the price isn't that much more than what you would get on the street. This, right here, costs only a dollar and 60 cents. That's wild. Grandma Lou, she's a smart lady. Trust in Grandma Lou. Next place to have a grandma? No. Our next location has no grandmas. Will we still feel taken care of? Let's find out. Next Bonnie location, we're going round two with fish, but it's prepared in a completely different way. Our seventh banh mi today is known as banh mi jaga. This is a fish cake banh mi. The word ja generally refers to a Vietnamese dish made of ground or pounded meat or fish that's been seasoned and processed. That would be the cake part of the fish cake. And here they have a very unique process for making the fish cake. Let's go check it out right now. The process all starts with this right here. This is the fish batter. So he piles it in there, filling up this stainless steel cylinder. Once the cylinder is full, it's time for the extrusion process. He pulls it down, and from the bottom, you see it ooze out like a big bunch of fish noodles. That hits a sizzling hot oil. He gives it a little bit of a mix, and immediately you see it begin to puff up as it cooks. After a couple of minutes goes by, it starts to turn kind of a golden brown, and now it's ready to remove. He takes a giant clump, and he moves it over to this dish right here. That is ready to go inside our banh mi. Our fish cake has finished cooking, but usually when you get a fish cake banh mi, it's made with sliced fish cake and not like a fish cake noodle like this. Come and take a look. Oh, it's still very hot. It looks like the sandworms I've eaten in Hanoi. It looks very wormy. Right now, it's gonna be turned into a sandwich. Let's see how it gets put together. She puts in some coriander and then some pickled vegetables. Now it's time for the fish. She drapes in the fish, looking like little noodles, but it needs a little bit of flavor still. In comes the chole mix chili sauce and a bit of soy sauce too. Throw some chilies on there for some personality, and that is ready to go. 
This is what 84 cents will get you when it comes to a banh mi filled with fried wormy fish. I must clarify that there are zero worms in this sandwich. It just looks like there's a pile of worms in this sandwich. This is oily, heavy, and it's gonna be rich with seasoning. Time to take my first bite. Lots of coriander, super fresh, spicy. She put some chilies in at the end, very intense. The main thing about the fish is you would never guess it was fish. It just tastes like some kind of processed meat. Especially when you mix it with all the other ingredients, it would be hard to identify that as fish. Let's try one more bite. Look at this banh mi bread. Look how amazing and magical it is. That is crispy and flaky on the outside, and then it just perfectly contours whatever food you put inside of it. It's kind of a show. It's like being a kid and having a Play-Doh extruder. It's so cool that he just gets to and then a whole nest of worms falls out of it. That is banh mi jack at. At this point, I'm so full that I want to die, but we have two banh mi's remaining that you have to see. Let's keep moving. We have come now to our final banh mi location where we're gonna try two different types of banh mi and trust me, neither one is vegetarian. Let's go take a look at the grill. All right, so this place really gets cracking just a few hours before the sun comes down. So right here you can see the glistening, fatty, juicy, marinated pork. And then right now, she's putting on this. This is called bolalo. This is seasoned Vietnamese beef wrapped in a beetle leaf. Once that's finished grilling, that is gonna go inside our first banh mi. Here they also have sausage and they have a more traditional fish cake right here. As long as an animal had to die for this banh mi to exist, it exists here. Giving that pork a little bit of a flip. Hey, don't worry about that burn part, just rub it off. Everything here smells amazing. Finally, it's time to make our first banh mi with this right here, bolalo. First, grab a banh mi from your banh mi wall and then plug that banh mi hole with another banh mi. Slice it in half. So first, she's gonna be putting in pickled vegetables, then some fresh coriander. From here, she searches for the perfectly roasted stick of beef. It seems the appropriate number to fill a banh mi is four. Wait, five? Oh, this thing is jam-packed with beef. The final step right here, the secret sauce. That looks sweet and delicious. I cannot wait to try that. Oh, and then the final, final step, some spicy chilies just to make me suffer. I've got my banh mi and it has just begun to rain. This is what I love about Vietnam is that people can always adjust it. If you let the rain bother you, if you let it get to you, you lose. Because no matter what, it's gonna rain mm, most of the days. Enough of the rain, let's talk about the banh mi. There's a couple things about it that are very unique. One, the pickled vegetables, then the sauce at the end. You can just see, just by looking at the way the light reflected off of it, that it is sweet and sticky. Enough talking, let's give it a bite. Oh my God. I've never had anything like it. Delicious seasoned beef, sour pickle, fresh coriander, and that sweet, sweet sauce. See that sweet, savory, spicy, sour, everything except for bitterness. And we don't need any bitterness. It's perfect the way it is. Pickled veggies are a must have. They give it some great acid and a great crunch too. This is one of the best banh mi's I've ever had. I'm really blown away. And what's ridiculous, it's huge. The banh mi itself is bigger than any other banh mi we've tried today. And the price, super affordable. It's about a dollar and 60 something cents. So this is just one of the many meaty banh mi offerings she has. Next, we're gonna try out her best seller. I made that up. For banh mi round two, it's all about this right here, the marinated Vietnamese pork. First, she searches for the perfect piece of pork. It might be that one. It's not that one. That's not even pork. That's a sausage. She's found her piece. From here, she's gonna cut it up. Now for the banh mi. Slid it open, add in some coriander. Now she weighs the meat before putting it in. She hits it with some secret pickled vegetables very quickly, and then she dumps the meat inside. She said it looks so pretty, huh? And that wonderful sticky sauce is going on again. Now that is one heck of a banh mi. Let's try it out. All right, folks, we have our ninth and final banh mi right here. And the only thing keeping me going at this point is that this looks so delicious. Big, juicy, succulent pieces of pork. This piece of pork, it comes from near the ribs, is what I was told. And if you look closely, like right here, you'll see it actually has some bones in there still. Let's try it out. Mm, work. Uh oh, the meat came off, I got it in half, but the whole thing came out. She's nailed down these sauces between the pickles and between the sauce, it's so good. But this marinated pork meat, let's try this alone. Incredible marination. It is so sweet and so savory. It has such a deep, wonderful flavor. Some of the tastiest meat I've ever had. When we got here, they had this big bowl full of pork, and you could tell that pork had been marinating, not for 10 minutes, for hours, or maybe even over a day. What did I learn from this banh mi right here? If you got protein, and you're in Vietnam, they're gonna make it delicious, and they're gonna put that in between some bread, and you're gonna enjoy it. From here, I'm gonna tell you my absolute favorite banh mi, and it's not even one that we tried today. 
Besties, today we tried every banh mi in Vietnam. Now, is it really every kind of banh mi? No, there's actually other ones. In fact, my favorite banh mi is banh mi chung, the egg banh mi. I just didn't show it today because, you know, it's eggs and bread and it's not that exciting. It's certainly not as exciting as fish worms. But my second favorite banh mi is my dog, whose name is banh mi. Here's what she looks like. Here she is at my wedding. Cute, right? But from today, I must say my two favorite banh mi's were first the pulled chicken with unlaid eggs and then the bola lot banh mi here at the stand behind me. If you've only ever experienced banh mi's abroad or in the USA, after watching this video, you can see that the world of banh mi's is vast and expansive and it goes well beyond anything you're gonna be able to get there. I highly suggest coming here when you can and while you're here, have an affordable meal or two once a day. Go get a banh mi, switch it up every time. You will not be disappointed. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. All right. Hey, next time we should try um, nine different types of, I don't know, diet food. I'm so full. Oh. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to Beffers.shop today.